This is the Value Investor Podcast with Tracy Reinick. All things value, all the time. Welcome back, value investors. With the stock market sell-off accelerating, some deals are beginning to emerge amongst the wreckage, just in time for 2019, if I do say so. So some stocks are just simply oversold. Now, we as value investors, we have an advantage on our side in these stock market corrections, and that's really the fundamentals, because as stocks get cheaper, the fundamentals become even more attractive. And since that's what we trade on, this is a good time to be a value investor. Now, we want to buy our stocks for less than they're worth. That's the whole point of getting, you know, quote unquote, value. Um, So, for instance, I want to buy that $1 worth of sales for just $0.60 or $0.40 or anything under the dollar, right? Because that's the part of getting it on sale. So for today's episode, I wanted to look to find the best value stocks that maybe I might want to consider going into 2019. And so I decided to do just a basic value screen this time to see kind of what's going on out there now that we've had a couple weeks of this correction. So I started with the Zacks rank of number one, which is the strong buy, or number two, which are the buys, because that should mean, as I always say, that we're getting rising earnings estimates. And then I looked for a PE under 10 because in my own screens, I'm starting to see some real good value opportunities with those really low PEs. So I looked for under 10 and then I added a peg, the peg under one, which would give me both growth and a price to, oh, growth and the value, sorry. And then I looked at the price to sales ratio and I also did that under one. I haven't used the the price to sales ratio for a while. So I did want to get those stocks that had their sales, their sales on sale. And um, because I really like that metric when searching for value, that price to sales ratio. Uh, Remember, the price to sales ratio is the value investor's secret weapon. That's kind of how I describe it because it's really hard to fake the sales. You either have them or you don't. I mean, never say never. There are some situations where it's turned out to be fake. But for the most part, you're not you're not able to mess around with uh, certain things so that you're, you know, beating the estimate by one or two cents like you would on the earning side or that kind of thing. Um, so sales, good metric to look at. And when you get it, on the cheap side, it's even better. So again, remember what the price to sales ratio actually means. It means that we're paying less for each dollar of the sales if it's under the ratio of one. So again, if it's like 0.6, we're getting the sales, the $1 worth of sales for at a discount of what it is actually worth. And that's what we want. Okay. So I ran this screen and I thought it would be pretty narrow because it's got both the peg and the price to sales in there. Plus the Zach's rank will narrow it as well. And it gave me 29 stocks. Now I looked through this list and I was keeping in mind that these are the value stocks I really want to consider for 2019. Some of them on the list were our greatest hits, I like to say, from the past few months. Months. And there's nothing wrong with those. We know there were like auto retailers in there. There were a few of the um, big pharmas that I've talked about. Uh, GM was in there again. Um, nothing wrong with a lot of the stocks in the screen and a lot of them remain cheap, which is what we were looking for. But I kind of wanted some new blood. So I decided to toss these out. I really wanted to go into 2019 with a little little bit more diverse amount of names and um, I want I want th- some of the best ones. So I tossed that and then I removed the peg because I thought maybe that was keeping it a little too narrow and I might get a little bit better wider diverse choices. So I got 73 stocks just by removing the peg, but keeping the price to sales ratio in there as our value fundamentals. But a lot were small caps once I extended that because I didn't search for market cap. And I feel like those are a little volatile going into 2019. Um, 
And I, I just didn't like the choices. Let's just put it that way. So I went back to the drawing board, which is sometimes what you have to do as an investor. There's many different types of screens you can run and many different metrics, especially as a value investor, to look for cheap stocks. So I, I ditched all that. And then I decided, hey, maybe I should just look for those classic value stocks again, even though these this screen for classic value is very narrow as well. Uh, but it has a few different things in there than the one I just ran. So that would include, again, the Zach's ranks of ones or twos. So that universe is still the same, but it would use the PE of under 15 instead of 10. So I like that. Um, it's a little going to be a little broader. We might not get quite as cheap, although um, most of the ones that I decided for this episode are actually pretty cheap still. Uh, but we have the 15 and then this one did include the peg again and the price to sales, but it also has the price to book and the price to cash flow in there. So it's all the the classic fundamentals, but because that PE is 15, it's going to give me a few different names than that first screen I looked for, which has some of these same features. So, um, the, and I did, I do like this one that has the price to book in there too. So I ran this one and it had, um, I think it was 27 stocks in it. So that's very narrow as you might expect doing the classic value. Although in the past when I've run the classic value with these same similar metrics, it was less than the 27. So that does tell you what's happening out there now with this stock market correction that we are starting to see a lot of stocks falling back into the value category. And that's good for us. So let's jump right into what the five stocks are that I've chosen for this week. Um, looking ahead into 2019, because I think some of these are interesting names. Okay, so so the first one is Echo Global, and the ticker is ECHO. They do supply chain management, logistics, that kind of stuff. Um, I do like this area because the U.S. economy is still still pretty hot. I know everybody wants to think like, oh, it's slowing dramatically and it's things are getting worse out there, but it's it's not really. And these global logistics supply chain types of companies are seeing big growth right now. So this one has a PE of 11.8, so that's pretty cheap. It's not my under 10, but it's still pretty cheap. It's got that peg of 0.7. So we we do have the growth component. The price to book is just 1.5, and the price to sales is 0.25. So we'll just round it up to 0.3. So very cheap here, and I kind of like this, um, this supply chain management type of the business here. Okay, the second stock is in the retail side, G3 Apparel, ticker is G-I-I-I. <laughs> um, so basically three, the like three designation. But um, G3 Apparel, I've owned in my own personal portfolio for several years. I have owned it in the value investor in the past. Is fallen pretty dramatically off of its recent highs because everybody's souring on the retail side. Now, they do wholesale to a lot of uh, the big department stores, and they have contracts with some of the other big wholesalers like PVH, um, where they supply uh, like Calvin Klein, and they're doing Tommy Hilfiger dresses. But they also have some of their own brands, like um, Wilson's Leather and um, a couple others that they operate and also standalone stores through those brands. So this is kind of like a um, across the board type of retailer, but I really like what they do in terms of the design and, um, being on trend for the brands that they're producing for. So like Calvin Klein accessories, that kind of thing, they, um, are producing those products for the wholesalers. So stock has gotten a lot cheaper since it's sold off here. PE is 10.5. It does not pay a dividend. PEG is also 0.7 like Echo Global. Price to book is 1.2. And then the price to sales is just 0.5. So if you're looking for a retailer that not many people are paying attention to, this one has had the big pullback. So um, might be one to put on your list. It, in terms of just its reach across different product lines and uh, its products are carried in Macy's and Nordstrom's and the big department stores. 
Okay, moving on to kind of like a technology type of company, Tech Data. T E C D is the ticker there. And that's like on the um, helping customers with their networking and things on the tech side. This is one of those ones I looked up like three times, like, what do they do? And it's all like um, kind of flowery in the description. <laughs> uh, but they're fairly large company. So there's a lot of demand for this from smaller firms. This stock is really cheap. PE is just 7.5. They do have the peg of 0.9. Price to book is just 1.1. And price to sales is 0.08, actually. Um, pretty much really cheap. You're getting those sales really cheap with this one. So I, I put it on the list because it's kind of uh, one of those companies you don't hear about much, but it's gotten a lot cheaper here. So you might want to check that one out. And then we're going to switch over to, of course, insurance. Yes, I know. You're like, Tracy, why, why an insurance company? But remember, Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway isn't what it is without Geico, right? So this one is, I don't know how to pronounce it. So I'm going to I'm going to go for it here. Unum, I, I'm presuming U-N-U-M, Unum Group, U-N-M is the ticker. So U, N is in Nancy, M is in Mary. They do supplemental and disability type of insurance. Um, so those supplemental plans, kind of like Aflac, basically, they're in the U.S. and the U.K. Now, these shares have really been hammered down, and I'm not sure if that's because the U.K., component. People are concerned about Brexit possibly with this. Um, that's my only view on why it's been hammered so, so badly. But this one is dirt cheap now. PE is 5.6. PEG is 0. 0.6. Price to book is 0. 0.7. And price to sales is just 0. 0.6. So super cheap across the board. I mean, 5.6 times. Um, dividend, you're getting one here, 3.6% yield now. That's not too shabby. Uh, that's that's pretty up there. So as you would expect from an insurer, but this is one eh, you might want to take a look. Yes, I know. You're like, it's boring, but sometimes boring is good, right? Heading into this new year. So um, check that one out. UNM is the ticker there. And then we're going to round it up with another kind of freight logistics company, because again, this is kind of a hot area and and the market has totally turned on the transports and everything in this, this kind of segment, thinking a recession is coming. But this company is ARC Best. It's ARCB. And again, very cheap. PE of 9.3. PEG is just 0.2. Price to book ratio, 1.3. Price to sales is just 0.3. This company goes all the way back to 1923. They're actually headquartered in Arkansas. Uh, they do the trucks, the ocean air, managed transportation, all of that. They, too, pay a dividend, but you're only getting a 0.9% yield here, so just about 1%, but better than nothing, as I always say. I'll take it. I'll take the money, right? Uh, but if you want that dividend yield, you got to go for the insurer, I'm afraid. So that rounds out the top five here for this classic value type screen. A little bit different names than what I have covered in the past. That's what I was looking for with this. Going into 2019, I wanted some new blood and some cheap stocks that everyone is basically ignoring. So this is a good list of the ignored stocks heading into the new year. So let's recap those tickers again in case you missed them. We had Echo Global, ECHO, G3 Apparel, G... I, I, I is the ticker, Tech Data, T E C D, Unum Group, U N M, and wrapping it up with ArcBest, A R C B. So you definitely want to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode of The Value Investor as we go into 2019, because a lot is going on. And if this sell off continues, we're going to continue to see a lot of interesting cheap stocks here. And I will have more on what to look for in 2019 over the next couple of episodes. So subscribe on a couple different platforms, Spotify, of course, and we're also on Apple Podcasts as a standalone show under the Value Investor Podcast, and you can get us, as always, on SoundCloud, but only through the Zach's Market Edge, but you'll get two for one, and I'm covering a lot of stocks over there as well, but get us somewhere because 2019 is looking uh, to be really interesting here as we head into that new year, so definitely subscribe, and I'll be back again next week with some more value stocks.